Hey guys, so today we have some more beauty related drama. I like to compile these at the end of the week and just go over everything instead of just talking about one thing or video. If you hear any noises, because my garden door is open because I thought the weather was so stunning. I just wanted some fresh air in if you guys don't mind. And if you hear anything, just take it as ambience sounds. We love a little bit of white noise from the trees rustling away, I think. Anyway, today's video is actually very kindly sponsored by Day One Journal. So you can try Day One Journal today if you click the link in the description or go on dayoneapp.com slash Angelica and use code Angelica to unlock a limited time offer of two months of a free trial. So that's D-A-1-O-N-E app.com forward slash Angelica. So the Day One Journal app is actually the number one journaling app on the Apple App Store. That was a mouthful. And it makes sense why. Um, it's honestly the easiest to use app for journaling but it's still got everything that you need and it's just an easier way to journal than a physical journal and I would know because I used to do a bullet journal and that just took so long to set up that by month like three into the year I would just give up it looked pretty but it just wasn't very functional the day one journal app is so easy to use you can do a entry every day uh, you can add in photos and videos and voice notes it also will give you a prompt every single day if you're just not sure where to start with your journaling so that can be an easy way to get some thoughts down in the app now I find that journaling helps you find clarity in situations reduce stress and like your thoughts aren't just all over the place they're somewhere in one spot now even if you're not stressed and you're not looking to reduce your stress and you're completely fine you feel like you don't need to journal the day one journaling app is still a great option for jotting down memories putting it in like i said pictures and videos um for every day so you can scroll through and see what happened on each individual day it's great if you do traveling you can put down what you saw every day when you were traveling and it's just a beautiful way to go through and see everything that you've done i started journaling just to get some thoughts down when you work from home for yourself you just have a lot going on in your head that you're trying to constantly remember and remind yourself of. And I think um, mainly with me, I struggle to remember everything. And I just feel like there's a jumble of thoughts constantly in my head. So it's just nice to get something down. Now, the reason why you should use my link in the description is because you get a two month free trial. Now there is a free option to the day one app, but you also have the premium version, which is the one that I use and it's far more superior. You get to have more than one journal, which has been revolutionary for me. I have one for my personal life, one for my work life, and one for Phoebe, my dog. That helps me just split everything up so it's not all in one area. Something really fun though is you also get to change the color of the app icon on your home screen if you pay for the premium which I've done obviously my one's pink and in the premium version of the app you get unlimited photo uploads video uploads voice notes and you get unlimited speech to text transcription so you don't have that limit of only being able to upload one video or one photo you can upload as many as you want so go on dayoneapp.com forward slash angelica and you'll get a two month free trial so you can see how you like journaling on your phone uh, now let's get back into the tea so subscribe to the bell like comment for engagement and let's just get into it we have a few Michaela Negreros the Glamzillas. So Michaela finally addressed the TikTok ban and what would happen if, you know, TikTok gets banned. What's gonna happen to your career if TikTok gets banned? Well, I guess I'll be shit out of luck. No, seriously, I think when you choose to be an influencer, it's never like, oh, I'm gonna do this forever. This is like my end all be all career. It's definitely a career that requires a lot of future planning financially and just figuring out how you're gonna maintain this for the long haul, which I've I've done a very good job of and I'm, I'm happy about that. I think it's fair to say it would be devastating if TikTok got taken away. I've been doing this for four years as of this week and it's my dream job and I, I absolutely love what I do with my whole hat. Here's the thing, my passion isn't TikTok, right? My passion is to create, to create content, to teach makeup, to do beauty videos. And I can do that from any platform. I can go to Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram Reels. It would be a very weird transitional period, 100%, because I, I, my main platform is TikTok and I would have to navigate that, but that is something you're told from the beginning as an influencer, is that you need to be able to shift with the times. Behind the scenes right now, all the influencers that you love are preparing to shift if we need to. I am not naive. I am very aware that my main audience is on TikTok. I don't even have a Snapchat or a YouTube. I don't have a presence on many social media platforms aside from TikTok. So I am fully prepared to potentially be unsuccessful on these other platforms as a content creator. Won't be easy, but it'll be fun. It's like a fresh stat. Well, then comes the question, okay, so if it doesn't work out, then what? I feel extremely blessed that I've been able to do this career for four years. It, it all feels like a freaking dream and like a blip in the matrix, like is this even real? But I come from a family of hard work, entrepreneurs, and people who worked their ass off to be able to put food on the table and put clothes on me and like 
get me through school and everything. And I, I've never been afraid of hard work. Say I were to lose my career, what would I do? Well, there's a lot of things I want to do. I'm only 25. I would love to go back to school. I would love to finish my master's degree. I got halfway through and then I blew up on TikTok and I didn't finish. I would absolutely finish. I would also love to go to esthetician school. I wasn't able to do that earlier in life and I would love to do that. This career is absolutely my dream, but I have other dreams too. I would absolutely love to open my own like beauty studio or spa one day. Plus there's always the opportunity to start a beauty brand of my own. You and I have talked about opening sober houses together. There's so much I could do with my life. I am so young. I'm sure I will accomplish some of those things. But for now, I'm here to stay. As long as TikTok is here, I'll be here. And this is my passion. I'll never give up on it. In the four years I've been on TikTok, I've posted over 5,000 videos. These have been the best four years of my life. And you guys mean the world to me. You are my favorite part of this career. I am like the most optimistic person you'll ever meet. So <laughs> I, whatever happens, I'm just along for the fucking ride. I love you guys so much. You know that. I'll see you tomorrow. Someone said, if TikTok gets banned, I have a feeling YouTube is going to have a beauty influencer comeback like in 2016, 2017. And um, 100% I think that's true. This basically happened because of Instagram and Vine. So YouTube had a big come up after Vine got sold and then went bankrupt. And they also had a big amount of beauty influencers coming over from Instagram when Instagram kind of well, they didn't decide to stop paying and people just wanted to make more money and so YouTube seemed like the next best option was to move your following from Instagram to YouTube. So that happened and I for sure see that happening again. Um, but she said that would be cool. Doesn't sound like she wants to do YouTube and I have some ideas on why. Dragon Hill said, girl, just jump on YouTube with us OGs and she didn't respond to that or like that yet. Someone said, wait, you don't have a YouTube channel? Then who the hell am I following? She said, lol, I do not. Someone will make another app like TikTok if it does in fact get banned. And she said, that'll be exciting. Your followers will follow you wherever you post. And she said, hearts. Oh, someone said, I feel like every influencer on this app forgets that there's a thing called YouTube and there's literally YouTube shorts, which are like TikToks. She said, I didn't forget, I mentioned it in this video. Now, I actually don't think Mikhail is very excited about the idea of TikTok getting banned and having to move over to YouTube. First of all, you have to make long form content, which means you can't just scream and shout for clickbait, for all 20 minutes of a video, you also have to have something to say for 20 minutes of a video. You can't really filter your videos as much. I mean, you can, but it looks really weird as compared to TikTok. And with TikTok, you know, you have videos shown to you. So you need that first five seconds of screaming and shouting to catch people's attention. Whereas with YouTube, it works very differently. You see a title, you see a thumbnail, you click on it. There's less of that. I mean, we thought YouTube was bad with clickbait. TikTok is a whole different game, right? So I just think it's not something that she, finds easy to do right and two i think there is more of an incentive to disclose sponsorships on youtube that sponsorships on youtube have become just like an acceptable thing and as long as you disclose it you're fine whereas on tiktok you do a whole tiktok for a product and you don't disclose the sponsorship and that's your tiktok right and no one knows you got paid easy money youtube is not really the same thing you wouldn't do a 20 minute long sponsorship for one product without disclosing it and so i think the vibe of the job is completely different on youtube and so i think that's really what's not working for Michaela, right? With the ban and going over to YouTube. Um, and Jacqueline Hill saying, you know, go over to YouTube with the OGs. Um, I don't know if we want to associate with the OGs. Michaela also recently posted a PR package video where she said in a week, she got 50 packages. Holy shit, 50 packages. This is one week's worth of PR packages. I would be so overwhelmed. I mean, I think it's lovely, it's nice, it's amazing, but I would just be so overwhelmed if that's how many packages were being sent to me. I know a lot of people have an issue with like, oh, why are we saying it's influencers? That's not my criticism. My criticism is not brands sending PR to one of the biggest beauty influencers on TikTok. That's not, I understand why that is happening. I would just be so overwhelmed, um, so incredibly overwhelmed. A TikToker called Christy recently leaked a ColourPop launch because it was sent to her in PR. I am like 98% sure that I'm not supposed to get these yet. These are from ColourPop and they're supposed to be one of those Tarte Maracuja lip or like Elf lip oil do. Kind of scary right now because I'm literally looking all over online. I don't see anything about these. I'm just so confused because I also got it in a bunch of shades and somebody sent it in this like weird foil packaging. If you know, you know ColourPop never Never come in there. But anyways, whatever the case is, I'm gonna try to formula and hope that I'm not gonna get in trouble. And apparently there was an email sent out basically saying like, this was released early, like we weren't supposed to, like it, just because you receive a product early doesn't mean, you know? And then Michaela stitches it and she tries out the product. Not Chrissy leaking Colourpop's launch. Oh my God, she literally leaked it. Like I got an email saying she leaked it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm excited about these. These look sick. These are the Colourpop So Juicy Plumpin' Lip Liners and Plumpin' Gloss Balms. It's this whole marketing thing. And I am wondering now, 
What's this done on purpose? Because Colourpop usually doesn't get involved in this shenanigans, but it makes me think Colourpop hasn't been in the conversation for a minute. Like I think Elf has been in the conversation and I think there are a few brands that are taking over the consumer mind. And Colourpop used to be on top and now I think they've slightly fallen off. Like not massively, but just slightly fallen off. And I just wonder if they got caught up in the shenanigans of this whole, oh, it's been leaked. And then like that causes a buzz because it's technically negative, but it's a positive and... I just wonder if this was done on purpose because why else would make it a stitch? I don't know, there's just a lot going on here that I'm getting really suspicious about. Glamzilla recently did a Tatcha sponsorship. Tatcha has come up with new launches. Ah, let's talk about it. You know, anytime Tatcha launches something, I'm a huge fan. So th this is the Silk Sunscreen SPF 50, okay? So look, see that beautiful sheer tint? Well, it's a weightless formula. Look how easy it is to blend. And it's got these pearlized pigments that makes your skin look super luminous. See how easy it blends? It's got photo aging protection that helps protect over premature aging. Look at how that applies. It just blends seamlessly. Okay, wait, you're gonna love the next one. Love it so much, but I'm so excited to show you these. Tatcha came out with lip tints. These lip tints have SPF 25 in it and don't play. Lip protection is very important. On top of that, they, these are tinted, so they look great. See that smooth glide? Yeah. It keeps your lips hydrated for so long, so you're not gonna get dry or flaky lips. Okay, this is the shade Plum Blossom. Like Tatcha came out with lip tints, it's crazy. So this is my favorite shade. This is the shade Camellia. We have one more shade to go. Look at Midnight Lily. Mm -hmm. Ah, what are you most excited about? Like the lip tints, I know, or the SPF. You can be, you can be excited for both. Let me know below. Once again, didn't mention in the video. If you just watched the TikTok, you would think it's just a review of some skincare. And then there's that tiny paid partnership tag, uh, which, as we know from the FTC, is not enough. You have to say it as well, uh, which Glamsel obviously doesn't do, um, and it's just great to see. Amazing. Now, Jeffree Star has actually dragged Michaela Nogueira again. He did a TikTok recently about declining brand deals, and there were comments that he was liking shading Michaela. He's basically saying, you know, I'm the only real one, I don't accept brand deals, which is false in itself. I mean, I'm not going to agree with Jeffrey just to disagree and spite Michaela, because I think they're both bad for different reasons. Michaela, because she's money hungry, Jeffrey, because he's just an awful person, and that's the tea in a matter of it all. He claims that he's the only one that doesn't accept sponsorships because he doesn't have to. I mean, it's because you're really rich. I would actually take a review from someone who is not as rich as you and is not taking brand deals over you because you can just afford to buy stuff and throw it in the bin like you did with Polite Society, like you did with Road. He's not an objective reviewer. He reviews wherever the popular opinion is. And when Michaela was getting dragged, he dragged her too. Then he invited her to do a review at his house. She declined. And then he continued to drag her because then he felt slighted because she didn't want to do a review with him. So I think the only reason he's dragging her is because she took his crown. He had to come back to make some more money on TikTok and people liked her more for a bit, I guess. And now he used that to boost himself up again because she didn't want to be on his side. So now she's against him. That's how Jeffree Star sees the world. It's either you're with me or you're against me. There's no neutral ground. And if I was Michaela, truly, I will also wouldn't want to do a collab with him knowing his past. Uh, I mean, she used to support him, which controversial in itself, but whatever. Um, but the fact that she's not supporting him now is actually a net positive. I actually think that's a good thing that she's doing. So shout out to Michaela Guerrero for not doing a, a collab with him, okay? And that's really it for all the beauty drama for this week. Um, let me know what you guys think about any of the stories. Subscribe, hit the bell, like, comment for engagement, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.